Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. And today in my this particular video, I am going to discuss one interesting concept related to Kinesis Data Firehose and the Lambda Transformation. Okay. So in my previous video, when I explained the Kinesis Data Firehose and Lambda Transformation, that time in the Lambda Transformation port, what we used? Basically here, the JSON data is keep on coming. And in the JSON, we added new line character using the Lambda Python port. And then that JSON data we have written in S3 data lake, right? If you want to know that detailed explanation, you can go through the link given in the description box, okay? So now let's see how we can use this same Lambda for transforming the incoming JSON data to CSV, okay? So the architecture looks like this. Suppose here we are having our data producer, maybe there is some sensor or something. And that is producing JSON data, which is coming in Kinesis data stream. From the data stream, the firehose is taking the data. That JSON data, it is converting to CSV using this Lambda. Basically, here we are doing the transformation from JSON to CSV. And then that CSV data, it is writing to S3 data lake. Okay. Here it is acting like buffer, this Kinesis data firehose. It is accumulating the data from the Kinesis data stream. If certain MB of data is accumulated or else if uh, some particular time is over, then it will just dump the accumulated data after transformation to S3 data lake, how it generally does. Okay. Only the new thing will be the Lambda code, which is converting from JSON to CSV. Okay. So let me show you the code first. So if you recall my previous video where I explained the Kinesis Firehose and Lambda transformation, there I used this particular code. Okay. And you can always use this particular code as template and modify only the required part based on your business requirement okay like here if you see import json import boto3 import base 64 all these things are required then here output we are defining as empty array because finally we need to return the output right for each element after transforming we need to send the array data so that is also common thing then here lambda handler we are basically defining we are printing the event that is optional and then we are iterating in the records in kinesis firehose whatever present and then as you know that whenever data is basically sent across network, it is encoded with base64 encoding format, right? So we are first decoding the data, okay? Once we are decoding the data, we are printing the payload, okay? And th this payload will be basically in string format only. And then what we are doing in that particular payload, we added a new line character and then we again encoded that data with new line character. And then here, this is how our output record should be. Some record ID, whatever in input, we were getting the same record ID we should be sending while making the output. Then result is okay. And then here, we are basically writing our process data. And then here, we are appending in this array. And then we are returning, as simple as that. Now, suppose I need to convert this particular JSON to CSV. Then I will just play with this particular part. Okay, central part because outer part will be almost same irrespective of whatever transformation we are doing. Okay, so let me show you the new modified code and this code I'll be sharing in the description box or in the comment section also. So here also it is same. We are importing the necessary things. We are creating the empty array here. We are defining our lambda handler. We are printing the event which is optional. We are iterating in the event records. Then here what we are doing first we have decoded the JSON data and once we have decoded we are getting string data, right? Now that string data, we are converting to JSON, okay? So if you just think like this way, how the data will be coming, just let me give you one sample. Suppose our JSON data, what we sent via the producer is, suppose there is a key called A and there is another key called B, okay? Like this, we are having our JSON data. Now first, it was converted to string and then it was encoded, okay? Now when we decode it first, then what will happen? It will be basically a string data. Now from the string, we need to get the dictionary, right? So what we are doing, we are applying json.loads. If we are doing json.loads, we will be getting this as a dictionary. Now what I can do, I can basically iterate in the dictionary. So how I can iterate? For i in, suppose this dictionary name is dict, okay? dict. So for i in dict, if I just iterate like this way, the i will contain the key. So first will be a, then next will be b like that, right? That's how iteration works in case of dictionary. So what I can do, all I have to do each time while iterating, I have to extract the value part. That value part I can easily extract using uh, dict of i 
and then I have to append that in a particular string with comma separator. Okay, so just I will add comma every time and that way if I process like this way I will be getting 5 comma 6 that is only in the dictionary the value parts I have taken and I have made comma separator that's all okay right so that's what I have done here so here if, if you see here first I am reading that particular data now after decoding it is a string so I am converting that to dictionary using json.loads I am printing that and then here output payload okay for a particular dictionary I am defining an empty string and then I am iterating in that dictionary. I am taking the value part using payload of i. I am converting that to string. And then each time I am appending comma in it. Because I have to make a comma separated file. Okay. Or comma separated data. Okay. And then here. Once this is done. What will happen in output payload. All the value parts will be there. Okay. So if I keep on iterating. For every value, their comma will be added. Okay, so if you see, suppose our dictionary is like this, and if I keep on iterating and adding comma, so I will be getting 5, comma, 6, comma, like this kind of string after iteration. Okay, so the last comma we don't require. So what I can do? I can basically ignore this last element. So that's what I am doing here. Output of payload, colon, minus 1. That is, last element I am removing. Okay, using negative indexing, right? And then here I am adding a new line character to make sure all the CSV elements are separated by new line character. Okay. And then here what we are doing. Here we are again converting back to base 64 encoding. Just like in the earlier lambda code whatever was there. And this part is as it is. Okay. If you see here we are doing the same thing. No change. Okay. And this is how using this simple lambda code you can convert the incoming JSON data to CSV data. Okay. Now let me just show you one demo. So I can delete this particular part. I can go to Kinesis and here I can create one Kinesis data stream first. Okay. So here Kinesis data stream is selected and then here I can give hello this thing listen to CSV demo. Okay. Right. And this one I am creating provisioned. As of now I am keeping only one shot for this POC purpose and keeping all other properties as default. Here I am creating my data stream. Okay. I will be just keeping a note of my data stream name. Okay. Right. And then here what I will do based on the architecture, I need to create a firehose. Okay. So before creating the firehose, what I will do, I will create a lambda function, which will basically apply the transformation for converting the JSON to CSV. Okay. So here I will go to lambda. And then here I will go to create function demo JSON to CSV. Kinesis white some name I am giving and then here I am choosing python okay and then here I am creating the function all I will do I will copy this particular code control c and here I will go to lambda and I will paste the code okay so here our lambda is ready I can remove this one and paste that okay and then here I will deploy this that's all and one more thing I will do I will go to configuration and I will change the timeout from 3 seconds to some higher value because it might take some time to process all the data so better keep it higher value like 4 minutes 3 seconds and I will save this one okay right and I will create one S3 bucket for destination where firehose will dump the data like here you can see one S3 bucket is there so here I will go to S3 And here I will go to create a bucket demo sd listen to csv destination some name I am giving and then here what I will do I will create the bucket so here basically our firehose will dump the data that's all okay so this is the one as of now it is empty and now what I will do I will create, create a delivery stream a delivery stream source is basically our kinesis data stream destination is basically our s3 okay and i will choose my data stream which is basically this one i will choose that one and delivery stream or firehose name this is fine no problem transforming using lambda i will make this enable and i will choose my lambda code okay fine and here buffer size buffer interval fine i will go a little bit below here buffer size I will just do 3 MB 
and buffered interval is 60 second only I am keeping okay and this property's destination setting here I need to choose the S3 location where I want to write the data so basically this is the S3 bucket what I created right so I will just choose that one and it is almost uh, ready sounds good all I will do is create a delivery stream okay so here our delivery stream is created right so it is going to take some time now it is active so here if you see our kinesis data stream is ready our kinesis firehose is ready our s3 location is also ready okay our lambda is also ready okay now what we need to do we need to basically generate some data and we need to test the pipeline right so what i will do for this particular demo purpose i have created one simple python producer in google collab so for that i need database access can secret key so i will just download that So here I'll be taking AWS access key and I'll be taking AWS secret key also. And the region. Okay. So here if you see this particular Kinesis data stream is in which region? It is in US East 1. So I'll be taking that. Okay. Right and then here we are good to go so here i have basically created a dummy producer so this particular code also i explained in my previous video so i'm not going through that just i will give the name of my kinesis data stream so here my data stream name is this one i'll copy this one and i'll paste that here okay right and here let's just run this particular code So here you can see some IoT kind of data it started producing. Okay, IoT value and IoT name it is purchasing. Soon what we should see if I go to monitoring here I should see that in Kinesis data stream the data is coming. Okay, so for this here I can check the incoming data sum. I can expand this and here I can go click on view in metrics. So it will open the CloudWatch metrics. And here instead of 3 hour I can change to 1 hour or maybe in less value maybe 10 second I can give. Okay, within 10 second if the data is coming, here it will be showing the total sum of data. So here if you see our code, here we are basically publishing 100 records using while loop. Okay, so 100 records should be coming soon in our Kinesis data stream. So let's see. So here you can see one data point came and if I just put my mouse pointer over that here you will see incoming records equal to 100 okay soon what will happen the fire hose will be triggered and it will basically trigger our lambda okay for transformation so I can go to lambda in monitor section and I can go to view logs in cloudwatch and I should see that the lambda is, has started processing all the records okay so let's see that so here it is not yet created that means firehose is not yet started we have to wait little bit because here we have mentioned that if this much amount of data is accumulated or else wait this much time to start dumping the data in s3 so obviously firehose will take some time to trigger our lambda and then process it and write in s3 okay so lambda has created the logs so if i just click on that here i can see that all the payloads came and it has processed 100 records okay so basically in one batch itself all the 100 records are processed and now i can go to my s3 and i can refresh this one here year then month then date then here basically hour and then i can click on this to download the data and show you that here we have sent the data as basically json but this data should be actually in csv format due to our lambda transformation okay so let me just show you so I will just edit with Notepad++ plus plus and see this is the data what we are getting. This is beautifully in CSV format only. First one is sensor name, next one is sensor value. Okay. Now if you want, you can read the data in Spark from S3 and do all kind of processing. Like here I can show you, I can read the data in Spark. So here I am first installing Spark in 
Google Colab Notebook and then here I am creating this partition. Okay, here I am downloading all the Hadoop related charts to set up the connection between Google Colab and our S3. And here AWS access can secret key I am using for S3 connection, which already we have defined in our this particular place, right? So it will be taking the values from there. And then what I can do here, here's part.read.option. Error is false because in our this particular data in CSV format, which is stored in S3, then header is not there, right? So header is false in first schema 2 and here CSV S3 location we have to put. So I can go to this particular S3, I can take the S3 URL and I can paste that here. This is just to show you that it is perfectly working. And here basically we are using S3A file system. So here I have written S3A. Okay, here Spark is installed. I can create this Spark session. Okay. So here you can see our Spark session is created. And now I can read the data from S3 directly. Like here I can show you. So it is going to take some time because Google Colab is trying to connect with S3 with this kind of charts. So obviously you can expect some delay. And the data is read. And then here I can do stf.show to show you the data once. See here, first one is sensor name, next one is sensor value. So sdf.count if I do, we publish basically 100 records, right? So here Spark should also show 100. See 100 records, it has read successfully. So this is how using Lambda, we can transform the data from JSON to CSV in Kinesis Data Firehose and then write in S3 data back, okay? I hope you understood this. This is all for my this video. All the codes I'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section. If you want to, you can go through that. And if you find this video helpful, then please like, share and comment. Subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you.